This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best place to build your online portfolio. What's up? This is John from Dime Rats for Photography, and today let's take a look at getting started with Lightroom Classic. This is gonna be an awesome walkthrough for anyone who's new to editing your photos. Maybe you just got a digital camera, or you've been curious about Lightroom and you're just not used to using it. Keep in mind, we're gonna be taking a look at Lightroom Classic, However, most of the stuff you see here, you can apply to Lightroom. And if you're not sure the differences between Lightroom Classic and Lightroom, definitely check out my video up above. It'll help you figure that out. But for now, let's go ahead and just jump right into Lightroom. So when you first jump into Lightroom, you'll see a blank slate just like this. You've already created yourself a catalog and pretty much you have no photos at all. The first thing we're gonna need to do is import our photos. So you can go ahead, pop in an SD card, and hit the import button on the bottom left. When you're on your import screen, you'll see all your photos in the center. Sometimes they won't all load in, it depends on your camera, but don't worry, they still will import into your computer. On the left side, you'll see your source, so where your photos are coming from. So for me, this is gonna be my SD card. And then on the right, you're gonna see where your photos are going to. Also at the very top, you can choose how you're gonna import your photos. You can copy them as DNGs, copy off the card, which is what I generally do, move them or add them. But move and add you're gonna to wanna to do if you already have them on your hard drive and you just wanna add them to your catalog. On the right side is gonna be how we organize our folders. One big tip is to separate all your sessions by year and session type. That's how I keep everything nice and sorted. So you'll see on my hard drive, I already have a 2020 folder. And then inside that folder, since we're looking at a wedding, I can put it into a folder and call it weddings. You'll see there, it shows my weddings there. Now, since I'm a wedding photographer mainly, and I do many weddings in a year, what I'll do is have nested folders inside of weddings by the couple's names. So again, the best way to sort your photos is gonna be year, session type, couple name, or year, session type, location. Anything of that sort will help you keep everything organized. And you're gonna to wanna to do that because when your catalog starts getting large, you're not gonna know where your photos are. On the top, we have our file handling. This will help us decide things we wanna do with the files while they're coming over and being copied. We can build our smart previews, which if you wanna import and just leave it and let it do everything, that would be great to choose. You can make a second copy to a different hard drive, which I highly, highly recommend, especially if you're a wedding photographer. And you can even add captions. Also, if you want to, you can apply a preset during import. That's pretty cool as well. So there's a lot of cool options. Any photos that have check marks mean they're gonna be imported. And after you choose where you want your photos to go, you can go ahead and hit import on the bottom right. Generally importing will take some time. It depends on your computer and its speed, also your hard drives and their speed. But you're looking at maybe six to 10 minutes and maybe closer to 25 minutes if you're also gonna do smart previews. So now that we've finished importing, we are back to our main view of Lightroom. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're seeing here. On the left side, we have a preview of the photo that we're currently selected on. We have information about our catalog and then how everything is broken down within our folders. This way we can jump between different sessions if we need to. In the center section with all of our photos, this is called grid view obviously because it's a grid of photos. On the bottom left here, we have our different views. You have the loop view, which is gonna give you a close-up of one photo. You have comparison, which you can choose two different photos. And you also have the survey view, which is one of my favorites. In survey, you can select a couple of photos and compare them all. So if I select these photos holding shift, go into survey mode, and I can compare all the photos next to each other. On the right side, we have our histogram and quick develop. Quick develop is super awesome because it's a way for you to edit without having to actually go into the develop mode. You're gonna mainly use this if you're editing 
multiple photos at a time, but generally you won't be using this too much. Also, we have our metadata and keyword area on the right side as well. And on the bottom, we have our film strip, which is a way for you to see more of your photos. Now that we know the lay of the land, let's go ahead and jump in and start editing some photos. So I choose a photo, and then on the top right, I'm going to go under develop. Develop is where we make all of our edits to our photos. On the left side, you'll see your history and also any presets you might have. Presets are a great way to start out when editing. However, make sure you understand Lightroom and just don't rely on presets alone. If you want to check out my preset, you can see it down in the description below. That's what I'll be using to edit today but we are gonna look at all the options as well so that you understand what you're doing to your photos. On the right side, this is where we're gonna do most of our editing. At the top again, we see our histogram. Then below that, we have our crop tool, spot removal, and other options as well. The basic area is gonna be where you make most of your changes. This is where we're gonna to get to exposure, whites, blacks, shadows, highlights, so on and so forth. And if for some reason your area doesn't look the same as mine, you can also press these little triangles which will open and close different areas. Generally, I'll leave the areas that I don't use too often closed. Under basic, we have our tone curve. And then we also have the HSL section, which this is where you change your colors and how they look. We have the brand new color grading area, which you can check out my video up above on that as well. There's details. This is where you deal with sharpening and noise reduction. The lens correction area, which will put corrections on your lenses if they have warping in them and things of that sort. Transform is for leveling out your photos. And then effects will have things like grain. So I'm going to start out with applying a preset. So I'm going to throw on the natural fills preset. And currently it's super grainy, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that down. So we go down to our effects, and I'm going to turn that all the way down. Now in our basic area, we have white balance at the top. That's going to change the coolness or warmness of your photo. So this photo, the white balance looks great to me, but if I want it to warm it up, I could come over to temp and move it over to the orange side. You'll see everything start getting more warm and orange. One tip is that when your mouse is hovering over one of these sliders, if you use up and down on your arrow key on your keyboard, it'll move in increments of five. That's generally what I do while I edit. Tint is the same thing. You have magenta or green. So I can turn that down and now everything is super green. So I want to add some exposure. That's just going to be how bright the photo is. I'm also going to turn up the shadows. Now keep in mind your shadows and blacks are two different things. Shadows are dealing with the shadows. Blacks are dealing with the black in the photo altogether. And you can change any of these sliders. And what I would suggest doing is just kind of messing around with them and seeing what changes they make. Once you're used to what changes they make, figure out which ones you want to use more often. So like if I want to add some more shadows in there, I can turn it down or up. Turn up the clarity a little bit. It gives a false sharpness to the photo. Don't turn it up too much. It's a little bit too much. One of the next biggest sections, and this is going to help you create your own presets, is going to be the HSL section. Now, HSL is broken down into three different parts. You have hue, saturation, and luminance. So hue is going to actually change how the color looks. Think of it almost like the tint or the white balance. So you see here I have red and I can make the red more orangey or I can make it more red. And you can see her lips kind of changing there. Also the skin tone, because again, skin tone sits in the orange range. So again, hue is how you find what color you actually like. You can see my stuff is tweaked a little bit here and it's based on how I like my colors to look. Saturation in HSL is going to be for the saturation of that color. So again, if I turn down the red all the way, it's going to suck the life out of all the reds in the photo. Generally, if I'm dealing with a photo that's too orange, but I still need it to be warm, I'll go to HSL to turn the orange down some. 
and then luminance is going to be the glow of that color. So if I wanted to, I could turn luminance of orange up and you see she's like shining away. <laughs> so play around with that section until you find out the look that you truly love on your photos. One of the next most important areas is going to be the detail. This is where you deal with sharpening your photos. So with sharpening, we have the amount, the radius, detail, and masking. So amount obviously is how much sharpening. Radius is actually how thick your lines are gonna be for the sharpening. And if you hold down Option or Alt, you get this extra view that will show you how much the radius is affecting the photo. I usually like to keep mine around 1.2 or somewhere in that point. Detail is also doing the same thing. It's how much detail is being sharpened in the photo. And if you hold down Alt or Option, you can also get this gray view and see exactly how much you're changing the photo. Masking is gonna be how much of the photo is actually being sharpened. So generally what you don't wanna do, when masking is turned all the way down, you see how basically everything is gonna get sharpened. So even the little grooves inside the skin and things like that, and you don't want that stuff to be sharpened at all. So what you can do is hold down Alt or Option and slide your slider over until you're only seeing the lines instead of all of the little lines inside of the face. So like somewhere in here. And this is gonna show me all the lines that are gonna be sharpened. And then from there, I can turn my sharpening up or down. Luminance and noise reduction is gonna be how much noise reduction is happening. And then details will bring the details back in your noise reduction. Keep in mind, when you have your noise reduction all the way up, your photo is going to get kind of soft looking, almost milky, I guess you could say, and you're not going to want that. So you can turn your details up some to kind of save that, but don't add too much noise reduction. Generally, you're going to want to be taking a great photo in the first place where you don't really have to do noise reduction. And that was a quick look at editing a photo. Let's go ahead and edit a couple more and I'll go through my normal workflow of how I get a photo to look how I want it to. So again, I choose a photo, we go into develop. I generally have a preset I like to use. And again, you can make your own preset and save it into Lightroom so that you have the look that you love. Add my preset, and then I'll go in and adjust things like my exposure, my highlights and shadows, the contrast, white balance looks great, clarity, my HSL is how I want it to be because I saved it as a preset. Adjust my sharpening a little bit. And I'm also gonna turn the grain down just a bit. I do love grain, however. So we'll leave it about there. And here is our before and after. So one thing I absolutely love about editing photos in Lightroom is the speed you can get out of Lightroom as well. One thing that's really easy to do is copy your settings from one photo and paste them on another photo. So if you're shooting in the same scene, especially if you're using the same lens, you can just copy that setting and paste it across all your photos to speed up your editing. So like the photo I just edited, if I like the way it looks and we can see all these next couple of photos look about the same, probably with the same lens, I can select them all with shift. We can see that this first photo is highlit a little bit more than the rest of them because it's the one that I'm currently selected on. And then down in the bottom right corner while I'm looking at my grid view, I can hit sync settings. Now, while I'm syncing the settings, it's gonna ask me what of my settings I want to sync. Most of this stuff you're going to want to turn on, but things that you don't want to turn on are local brush adjustments because that's going to be specific to your photo and transform, which is going to be any cropping, any leveling of your photo as well. Once I'm happy with all the choices I have, go ahead and hit synchronize and it's going to sync the settings across all those photos. And since they're basically all in the same place, with the same lighting, they're gonna look great. 
I can use survey mode again to see all of them and make sure they all look correct. And then from there, I can choose which photos I want. Now, while we're talking about editing, one thing that you might have to do very often is adding brush adjustments. This way you can make changes to certain parts of the photo and not affect the whole photo. When you're in the develop section, you can find your brush adjustments on the top right. Just click on the little brush. Now, when you're in brush adjustments, you'll see you have this little circle here, which will allow you to draw on your photo. Now, if you're drawing and you don't see anything, if you hit the O key, that'll give you this mask overlay, which will show you where you're painting. We have our effect, so that's gonna be what we're changing. Sometimes you also have some presets in here. So like soften skin, if I wanted to soften her skin up a little bit. But either way, what you can do is come in and make whatever changes you want to. I generally suggest turning on auto mask. This will help you stay inside the lines while you're actually painting on your photo. So since I chose skin smooth, let's come in here and just paint on her skin. Basically what skin smooth is doing is turning down the sharpening. So I can have sharpening nice and sharp everywhere else, but not on her skin. And if I wanna see how it actually affected my photo, I can hit O again to get rid of the mask. And that is way too much. <laughs> so I can come in here now and make some adjustments like turning the clarity up some. And turning the sharpness down just a bit. And I think that's good. Now that I have an area I painted, you'll see this little circle. This circle is showing me that there is an adjustment there. You see when I hover over it, it's showing me where that adjustment is. And now I can change that area so I can turn up the temperature and make her totally orange or turn down exposure. I can basically do whatever I want to in only that particular section. Again, brush adjustments are gonna be super awesome for making changes to a specific spot on your photo. Something else you might wanna do while you're editing your photos is spot removal. Spot removal is pretty good in Lightroom, but it's not as good as Photoshop. We're not looking at Photoshop today, but if you do need to do more retouching, just know Photoshop is gonna be where you wanna go. But let's go ahead and look at spot removal in Lightroom. So while we're in develop, click this little circle. So you'll see we have two different options. We can either clone or heal. Generally what you wanna do for spot removal is heal. Cloning is a little bit hard to deal with and again, Photoshop does it better. I have this circle now and I can change its size and then anywhere I wanna get rid of a spot, I can just click and it's gonna choose another spot to replace it with. How fast this happens is up to your computer but generally you wanna pick a spot that's close to the same spot you found. So again, if I wanna get in here and kinda of get rid of her birthmarks or freckles or just skin spots, I can go in and select all of them and kind of remove them that way. Now again, when you're doing this, use caution. Don't just be editing people to look unrealistic. I'm not a big fan of just changing the way someone looks. But again, if there's something on a photo that you need to get rid of, your spot removal heal is gonna be the best way. When I'm done with that, I can remove all these little circles by clicking on the spot removal again. And now I have my photo with all the spot removals on it. Down at the bottom, I can compare the before and after if I want to by clicking this little YY. And now I can see that, I can zoom in and see where I've done spot removals. So that was a quick look at editing in Lightroom. This should help you get started with editing and make sure that you know what you're doing while you're in there. The last and most important part is gonna be exporting your photos. So let's go ahead and look at that. So while exporting your photos, first you wanna select all the photos that you want to export. So I'm just gonna select a couple of photos here. And when I'm in grid view on the bottom left, you'll hit export. Now your export settings can vary depending on what you wanna do. 
but let's look at generally what I do when I'm delivering photos to my clients. First, we have our export location. This is gonna tell the computer where we're gonna put our photos. Generally, I'll export my photos the same way I import them. So I have a different location, separated by year, separated by type of session, separated by couple name. For now, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just have it export wherever. <laughs> We have our file naming, which generally I don't change the name. However, sometimes you might be delivering to a blog or a magazine and they want stuff named a certain way. This is where you can make those changes. We don't need the video section because we're not doing any videos. Then we have our file settings, which is one of the most important parts. So I'm going to be exporting as a JPEG, 100% quality, and also sRGB. Keep in mind that most everything uses sRGB and you're going to want to go ahead and export in that file format. If you need anything else, the options are right there and you can see them there, but generally just keep it on sRGB. Then we have our image resizing. This is where you can change the size of your image. Now, when I'm delivering to my clients, I like to have the full size so I don't need to choose resize to fit and the resolution will be 300 PPI. This way I know if they're going to order prints, they're going to look good and be able to print them at a fairly large size. If you do need to resize your photos, just click resize to fit. And generally I'll do the long edge and then do something like 2,500. That's great for like Instagram or online. Output sharpening is going to be additional sharpening on top of your photo. You have screen, matte and glossy paper. Generally, I'll leave it on screen and do low or standard. That looks good, but remember, do not over sharpen your photos. No one likes the way that looks. It looks really bad. After I've set all my settings, everything should be good to go. And then you go ahead and hit export. Oh, looks like I already exported one of these photos. I'm just going to overwrite that one. And there they go. How long your exports take depend on your computer again and how many files you're doing at a time but usually it will not take that long. Now that you've exported your photos, it's time to share them. And the best place to share your photos in an online portfolio is this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform that will help you build your online website and portfolio. They make it easy for you to choose a template, put your photos up online and have a great professional look for your business. I myself have been using Squarespace for about six to seven years now, and I love the way it looks and how easy it is for me to change any of the pages on my website for whatever I need. If you don't want to deal with the hassle of making a website and just want it to be super easy, Squarespace is hands down the way to go. And on top of that, you have other great features like analytics, which will help you see who's visiting your site and from where. Also, if you really love the photos you've been making and you want to sell them, Squarespace also has a commerce which will help you sell your photos digitally or actual prints which you can fulfill yourself. So definitely make sure to check out Squarespace if you haven't already built your portfolio. Check the link in the description for 10% off of your first website or domain. And there you have it. We've gone through Lightroom, all the basics to get you started on editing your photos. I hope this was a helpful look at using Lightroom and also make sure to share some of your photos with me on Instagram which you can find in the description below so I can just see the work you've done with Lightroom. If you have any questions as well, leave that in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer questions. Sometimes I just might take a little bit of time to get to them. And if you like what you saw, if you learned a little bit, please hit that like. It lets YouTube know that this content is good for everyone and I wanna teach as many people as possible how to edit their photos. Subscribe for more tutorials, wedding photography and behind the scenes and I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.